Hey, hey guys, what's up? It's your girl, Ginger Fox here. Uh, okay. I'm going to be reading some more Design Decorum, uh, Chapter 11, Part 2. And let's get into this. In your rooms, fastening the final buttons on your dress before I walk the bath. When Briar comes barreling in. Claire, Claire, Prince Hammond is... Isn't it just grand? He's so... Briar, thoughts are racing your tongue. What is happening? And Prince Hammond, he's here. Really? In Bath? I wonder if anyone else followed him as well. If only we could ever figure out who those others could be. But I know Prince Hammond will be in the, in the grand pump room if you wish to meet him. Are the other are my other friends going to be there? I bet you. I hear it's a meeting place for only the most fashionable people of Bath. And they serve uh, magical healing water from the hot springs next door. Isn't that a thing I've been around for years, so even like real life? You've only been in Bath but a few days and you've already arranged a gossip network. Oh, that reminds me. Briar rushes over to your closet and pulls out a white dress with delicate lace sleeves and periwinkle ribbons. <coughs> Briar, where on earth did you find this? It was at the door this morning. No one knows who it's from, but it came with this. Briar hands you a carefully folded leather with a delicate floor de list stamp on one side. Did you really not read this letter? I would never, to invade your privacy like that, the very thought. Briar. Okay, fine, you know me too well. It's from Mr. Chambers. Nice. Dear Lady Claire, I could hardly contain my excitement when I heard you heard you were traveling to Bath. Growing up, all my favorite summers were spent gallivanting around the city and exploring all the wonders it has to offer. It is my greatest and albeit slightly selfish wish for you to enjoy your time here as I so enjoy mine. In those hopes, I sent out for a dress for you to make your debut in. I pray your path cross in the glorious city so that I may see it through your eyes for the first time again. Sincerely, Mr. Chambers. Aww. Isn't that nice? If only the world were filled with people like Mr. Chambers. For real. Forget Mr. Chambers. Look at this dress. It's possibly divine. If Prince Hammond is aware you're in Bath, there's no doubt that Miss Parsons knows and has come to find you. She would absolutely swoon to see you in so, in so becoming. You hold the dress up to yourself in the mirror and twirl the skirt around. I truly do look as much a princess as I feel. Ah, uh, it's fine. It was more than kind of Mr. Chambers to send out for the dress, but I can't keep Prince Hammond waiting. You're too much, Claire. I'm certain Mr. Chambers will understand all. You troll one last time in the mirror before rushing downstairs. I'm ready to explore bath. You're more than ready. You scurry quietly and as quickly as you can down the stairs. The voices coming from the parlor stopped you. Your Grace, I would recommend you do not bite the hand which feeds you. How can you think that will help us with the Prince Prince Regent? Your logic is muddied by your daftness. Prince Regent? There must be... Enemies? Enemies, maybe. They may be, they may be blood, but I doubt. Your thoughts are interrupted as you hear the Regent stomping out of the parlor. Time to leave. You tiptoe over, then slink out the front door as noise, noiselessly as you can. After a short while, you reach the grand pump room. <coughs> you marvel at its beauty as you walk inside and quickly spy a few familiar faces. Chambers, Mr. Kanavi, with Kim Whistling. Whatever are you all doing in bath? I don't recall doing any math. The lady would like to know of our business in Bath, my lord. Where else would we be at such a time? It's the season for Bath. The chambers. Experience of wonders and glory of the architecture and the magical human powers of the mineral waters. Or gossip, that is what most people find themselves doing here. Drinking beer? No, no, it's the water they're here for. You lean in close, closer to whisper to him. Perhaps these magical waters could cure Ken Wesley's hearing. If only we were that lucky. 
I may be hard of hearing, but even I know when others are whispering. Our apologies, Miss Kim Whistlingly. Uh, we shall carry on with our conversations at a louder volume. I am about to make myself a proud groom. Thank you for remembering. The chambers pats Miss Kim Whistlingly on the bat and turns to you once more. The design in here is stunning, is it not? It is indeed. Prince Hammer shouts to your girl as he bounds over, waving, weaving his way through small gossip circles to you, followed by Mr. Harper and Miss Parsons. Oh my god! You're all here! Of course, my lady! We couldn't let Prince Hammond have all the fun in Bath. Annabelle. My heart has never longed for another as deeply as it has longed for you and our time apart. You throw your arms around Miss Parsons and wrap her into a tight hug, keeping her injury in mind. I have never been so glad to see someone. After a few fleeting seconds, you untangle yourself from Miss Parsons' embrace. What do you think of the grand pump room? Your eyes sweep around the room as you take every detail in. It has more, it's even more marvelous than I could ever dream. The grand pump room is so, well, grand. It brings me so much joy to see it through your eyes. I watching you take everything in is a sight in itself. It really, truly is so good to see you all, see you all, especially here. Yes, Del Sally, it's not historical, the best place to catch up. There's a certain someone I too would like to sna snatch up, Prince Lamed. Did you not just mention you're soon to be a groom? Let's talk somewhere away from prying eyes and ears. I believe I can be of service in that regard. And Kent Wesley, have you seen the Roman Ramon bath just around the corner from here? Come, you, myself, and Mr. Kanavi will take a turn. What advances of mine did she burn? Probably all of them, whoever she is. The Chambers leaves Mr. Kanavi and Kent Wesley away from, from your group and out of the grand pump room. Lady Claire, we're here to help you find a way out of your engagement and out of the Duke's home. We feel rotten knowing you're trapped into living under the same roof. Anything you need of us, simply send Briar or no, or write. S simply send Briar or write, no matter the time. What have I done? Uh. <clears throat> You've done everything and nothing. How do you mean? Your heart is true and it shows in your actions. Kindness draws loyalty close. You sure you make me almost forget all about Duke Richards. Which reminds me, I heard him mention the, the Prince Regent to Sir Gidden earlier today. Whatever could he be doing with the Prince Regent? He is of royal blood, but I don't think there would be any reason for them to interact. Perhaps he was staring in a mirror, pretending to be the prince to bolster his ego. You grew and stifled around and giggles. Mr. Harper and I need to be off to meet my sisters for tea, but I'm expecting a round of new theories upon our next meeting. Personally, I like to hear one that involves Sir Gidden and Duke Richards pretending to be the Prince Regent and Queen Charlotte. Miss Parsons politely pushes Mr. Harper's arm. You and Prince Hammond bid them farewell, then take a turn about the room. Seeing you small amongst your circumstances is inspirational, my lady. I figure it's better to spend my time taking pleasure in Bath rather than be bemo bemoaning it. Lady Claire, I know you have a tight watch on you at the moment, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask. What is it? I've been hard pressed to find someone to join me on an adventure to the Sydney Gardens Kennel. It's all I've been looking forward to since arriving in Bath, but I'm not a soul to enjoy it with. I cannot imagine Prince Hammer, the world traveler, needs a person to accompany him everywhere. That is, this is true, but I hear the Sydney Gardens is a place unlike any other, and not something to experience alone. It sounds as though you're in the market for an adventure partner. I cannot think of anyone I'd rather see it with. We could stroll around, forget all about your Richards, and perhaps even take a ride in a skiff. That does sound quite nice. Will you accompany me, Lady Claire, to tour Bath by oneself would be too lonesome. Um... Nah. So is another time. I thank you for your offer, but I, 
I'm quite keen on continuing my own tour through Bath. I think there's so much to be gleaned from venturing out alone and gain a new perspective. Lady Claire, always so wise. Perhaps I will journey to Sydney Gardens alone, then. I look forward to hearing about your adventures later. Press Hammond bows curtly and leaves you to explore the streets of Bath. You're strolling along the streets of Bath in the later light of the day, when suddenly you hear someone calling your name above the din of the surrounding carriages. Lady Clare! Whoever could that... Mr. Sinclair! Lady Clare. He runs towards you, but in his haste, he forgets his surroundings and almost collides with the carriage. Oh, goodness. Be careful. Mrs. Sinclair stumbles backwards and makes his way to you again, in a more prudent manner this time. Good evening, my lady. I don't believe it's, I've ever seen you so very ascetic. I prefer to save my enthusiasm for special occasions only. And seeing you for the first time in weeks this is quite a special occasion. I wasn't sure of when or where I'll be able to see you again. I hope to assure you that I will always find a way to see you. For you cannot live without my beauty. Does everything I say go directly to your head? Some things spend a moment or two in my, head, in my heart first. Sorry. But how can you expect your words to not bolster my vanity when they are so flattering? And now I see I have created a problem to which I seek a solution. For my sake, I hope it takes you ages to find such an answer. Unless it also somehow fixes my engagement issue. The wedding, everything is moving so quickly. I wish... Were that true, I'd be wrapped with joy in planning our, planning our wedding, rather than dreading every moment of it. I should like to see you engaged to anyone but Duke Richards, but perhaps I can help you slow things down, or steer you towards one of my favorite places in Bath. Do go on, Mr. Sinclair. I know I'm of a manor not far from here where the two of us could watch the sunset together. I can guarantee it is the most beautiful thing you will ever see in England. Mr. Sinclair leans in and close to you and whispers. Besides you, of course. <clears throat> Mr. Sinclair, I don't think I've ever heard a, an offer more tempting. Then won't you indulge me, Lady Claire? Might as well go back. You can probably send it on gone by now. Though it does sound nice. I've had quite a long day. I'm ready to return to my rooms. I would have love to show you, but I completely understand. The least I can do is escort you back to the Duke's townhouse. The very least. As the sun dips below the horizon, you walk arm in arm with Mrs. Sinclair, but after a short distance, he halts. Is something the matter? We're coming upon Duke Richard's townhouse. I want to be cog cognizant of where I'm dropping you off. Always so logical, so forward-thinking. Mrs. Sinclair... I love the way your mind works. The two of you continue to walk arm in arm until you reach the steps of the Duke's townhouse. I'll be wishing you extra strength in these next few weeks. We will all work together to get you out of this solution situation. Sorry, I know you will. Your mom and Sinclair then slip inside the door of the townhouse. You start to creep down the hallway, but you overhear two Richards and Sir Gidden's voices coming from the study. You slink closer and peer through the keyhole. You cannot tell me that the Prince Regent is doing that any differently. Your Grace, if he has the support of the nobility, it is easier for of him. I have their support. All things considered, it would behoove us to delay our plans by a few days' time. We don't have time. We must take down the Prince Regent now. Did you want to take down the Prince Regent? You shift your weight and a floorboard creaks beneath you. The Duke and Sir Gideon stop pacing and lower their voices. We cannot risk discussing anything further here. It's too sensitive. Then where shall we debrief? We'll discuss it tomorrow at the Great Bath. Let the others know. That seems to be all we're good for. Well, damn, bro. The others? If we ain't going there, then so shall I. Do Richard prepare to feel my wrath. Let's go, man. Will you be able to follow the Duke's plan, or will you be caught in the tracks? Oh, I'll follow it. Don't you worry. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs>
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, stay safe and take care. Love you all. Bye-bye.